Good evening. It certainly is good to be back up here. I know that it's been a while. So. Let's stand as we sing 347, the first, second, and the last. Tell it to Jesus.
Okay. Any other updates, changes, or deletions? Yes, Harry. Tracy Martin's on the list. She's not doing the best. And Darren Chapman, uh, one of these little outbuildings fell on his leg, broke, broke, well, broke, 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 Two R's, two M's. Two R's, two R's. Okay, so pray for Darren Chapman, broken legs. And any others? Updates, changes? Yes, Dan. You put the pray for the Richardson family. I was on a while. A good friend of mine, Ian Richardson, he, uh, they found him uh, dead Sunday night. still a few churches that 
have not dealt with this yet that are still dealing with it and uh, you know, because it is a very contagious disease. And the good news is I was reading uh, today, uh, of course, they always try to throw out these scary articles, you know. There was uh, in California, or Washington, state of Washington, I think it was, 102 people that have been fully vaccinated that actually tested positive for the virus. And that makes you think, oh, dude, what's, what's going on? But what they don't tell you until you read way down in the article, this is 0.01% of everybody who's been vaccinated, which is still far better than the 95% effectiveness of the, the vaccine, which is what they were expecting. Uh, so actually, the, the wipes that we use to clean things with, uh, that's how effective those, those wipes killing germs, that's 99.99% effective. That's actually how effective the vaccine's been so far in this area. But they don't put a positive spin on it, they put a negative spin to try to scare everybody half to death that, you know, you still gotta do this, you still gotta do that, you can't, we can't have any freedoms yet. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it is a virus that's still going around, so we need to pray for those that are dealing with it. So any others, prayer requests, updates, changes, deletions to the prayer list? Yes, sir. We have a couple family members in the nursing home right now. Um, one is our, um, it's my great uncle Harry, which would be my dad's uncle. Um, I have grandma David that was coming, that would be her brother. <laughs> I don't know about all the family history, but um, he's in the nursing home right now. Um, he's been, was sick. My dad might have said something last week about him, but um, I'm not sure, I can't remember. But um, he has been in the hospital quite a bit and was really sick. And he's in the and we had, my students were just finishing up our clinical this week. And so I was praying that he would be there before I left because getting back in there and visiting is a little, little of a chore. So right. I was really thankful that the last two days I've got to spend a little time with him and talk to him and stuff. And he's, he's a little depressed and very emotional because he's, this is the longest time he's ever been without his wife. He's, he was telling me this morning, he's, um, he's never remember being without his wife more than two or three days, like a whole weekend time. Um, so he's really upset and <coughs> emotional about that, but I'm, thankful um he's getting better he should with therapy and stuff should be ready to go home by the end of next week and what was his name again harry biggs harry biggs yeah, yeah definitely be frank you know that's that separation time sometimes is worse than the disease itself i think and you know, how it affects some people so we need to pray for them uh, going through those times anybody else updates changes yes ma'am you talk to someone that um prayed for my wife's He got some good news. One of those tumors had not increased in size, which is good. But the other one uh, they were looking at has doubled. So I think they're getting it tested now. And on the 14th is when they're supposed to find out something there. So pray for him. Any others? Updates, changes, deletions? Okay, how many unspoken requests do we have tonight? Many of those. So we want to remember those. And then remember our missionaries and other ministries uh, in the back, if you would. Uh, we have Randy Alderman in Togo, Africa, Ferdinand Bassett in the Philippines, Aaron Bratt in Israel, Terry Royals in Brazil, Dale Cable, Cuba, Paul Childers, Italy, Joseph Bear, Cambodia, William Jeffco, India, Laura Patton, Chile, Eric Porterfield, Sudan, Carlos Ramos, Venezuela, Stephen Trail, Middle East, Arturo Vargas, Costa Rica. <clears throat> and Daniel White, I did talk to uh, Jonathan White, his son, uh, this past week. And uh, his mom, uh, Daniel White's wife, of course, they were here, I think, just maybe two years ago. Uh, but she's continuing to work on the field. She's always had a very active part uh, in the ministry there. And uh, so I'll talk to the deacons, and then we'll uh, bring it before the church as far as what we're going to do there with uh, their support. Um, but uh, she's actually teaching in the, the uh, college. She's the Sunday school instructor 
she's also the music director there in the college. Uh, and of course, there in Costa Rica, it's been a blessing to them in a lot of ways. Three of the four children are serving with them on the field. And uh, they've been able to establish a college and train nationals going into these churches that they've been able to start. So uh, the Danny White's passing was, of course, a shock this past year uh, to them. And uh, his health had been a little bit poor, but uh, just they weren't expecting anything like this. So just continue to pray for them. And then Caleb Zhang in China. And then, of course, all of our home missionaries, uh, some of them evangelists, some of them just working here uh, in the States. Uh, Brother Bill Ankrum, Barry Burns, Ed Frampton, uh, Tim Green, uh, Brother Richie Harper, uh, Ron Hodge, Sharon Jones, Robert Lee, Bill Vaughn, Dave Herman, Dustin Beck, Charity Mission, uh, there in Columbus, Sheriff Ministries, uh, Christian Law Association, Mount Kissing Print Shop, uh, Titus International Institute, and then WMLJ Christian Radio Station there in Brother Brown. And <clears throat> Uh, of course, I heard from Brother Brown today. Every time I hear from Brother Brown, he's like, uh, it's me again. <laughs> I need a radio program. <laughs> so he always checks on how we're going, but he's like, I hate to bother you. He's like, no, I totally understand. And I get busy and forget to send in the programs, but I'm glad he keeps up with all that and checks on it. But uh, they're doing well up there, and the radio station's just doing great. And then also pray for our Christian schools and our nursing home ministries. Uh, I'm planning on contacting Harris Hall uh, this week, see if we can get in the month of April uh, to see as far as the time it might be May. I don't know, you know exactly what capacity we're going to be able to do that yet. If we're going to be able to do it like normal or if it's just going to be one person they're going to let in and hold a service, you know, what's going to happen there. So anyway, I think they're starting to open up just a little bit. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. And as we pray, you pray for those names that uh, just go down through the list. And let's, let's actually split the list up here a little bit. Uh, how many will try to concentrate on the names in the first column, the second column, and the unspoken request? How many will try to concentrate on those? Okay, great. Thank you. How many will try to concentrate on the third and fourth column names? Okay, thank you. And how about our missionaries and other ministries? Okay, thank you. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and I'm going to ask somebody uh, to pray if they would. And uh, actually, I'll ask uh, Dan Santucci, if you don't mind, uh, go to prayer. And then I'll close in prayer after you pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to come to your house tonight, Lord. The Lord, we come before you this evening, Lord, with uh, these prayer requests, Lord. There's uh, many, Lord, that have been listed here. Lord, I, I don't know them all by name, Lord, but uh, there are many that are uh, physically even ill, Lord, and sick. Lord, that need your uh, hand of healing upon them. You, Lord, spiritually, that healing, Lord. Uh, as the pastor said many times, Lord, uh, that you know, during this past year, during everything, Lord, you know, but some of the hardest parts is actually the separation, after is actually the depression, everything that's going on as well, Lord. Lord, we need you, and we need you more than uh, now and ever, Lord, and uh, at least in my life. And Lord, I pray that you would just uh, be with us, be with us as a church, Lord, strengthen us. Yes. Lord, uh, let us be that lighthouse, Lord, set up on a hill to be able to shine that light, Lord, for the, our community. And uh, as you guide, uh, uh, guide us, Lord, throughout the world, Lord, sharing your gospel, Lord, and showing us and be able to be that light that people know they can come to, Lord. Mm -hmm. And as we know, you're the place where we go to in the time of need. So, Lord, I pray for these people. Lord, I pray for all, all those that are ill, Lord, not even the Lord. I pray for uh, all the deaths, Lord, and the families. Of those that have passed, Lord, just ask you to comfort them, Lord, and uh, uh, have, have your hand of comfort on them, Lord, and also to be with them, Lord, uh, during this time in their life. Lord, I ask you to be with those that are in nursing homes, Lord, and uh, encourage them, Lord, comfort them and encourage them. And uh, those with COVID, Lord, uh, do the same, to be able to come them and encourage them, Lord, knowing that um, this time they're apart, this time they're uh, quarantined, Lord. Hopefully and prayerfully be for just a short while. And Lord, I pray that uh, you give all our missionaries that we support, Lord, be with all of the uh, other ministries, Lord, that we have. Lord, that you'll bless them and have your hand of uh, blessing on them, Lord. God, I ask that you to continue to be with us as a church. 
Lord, as you strengthen us, Lord, that we can do your work that you call us here to do and guide us to where you uh, would have us to be born. Oh God, we love you. We thank you for all you've already done for us. We praise you, Lord, as much as we come before you with uh, prayer and uh, of things and requests that we, Lord, we have in our lives and trouble we have in our lives, Lord. There's so many more things we could always praise you for and bless you for and uh, for doing in our lives, Lord. As you be with us now, Lord, as we have come here to meet, Lord, to hear your word preached. Be with us, be with the pastor, and be with the Our Father, we come to you, and Lord, so often we, as we lift these names up to your prayer, to some of us that don't know the folks here, they are a name. But Lord, I'm glad that you know each and every need. You know what's going on in our life. I think about these names on our salvation cards and those marked on our list for salvation. And uh, Lord, some of them, many of them don't live near us. But Lord, I pray that you will send a, a faithful gospel with us to them. And Lord, we're thankful that Lord, we can meet here on a Wednesday night and, and church is a safe haven. And it's a place where we can be built up and equipped and it's a place, Lord, we can be encouraged and strengthened. And then we can get refreshed and renewed to go out into the world where we do uh, the battle. This is, the world is the battlefield and it's where we do need to compel others to come in and, and to love them to Christ and to be a witness for them and to pray for them and just live a consistent testimony before them. Father, I pray for all the unspoken requests. Lord, each and every need is important uh, to each person that had one. And uh, I pray that you will meet those needs in a very special way. And uh, Lord, you have shown yourself mighty and strong so many times in the past as uh, such a faithful prayer answering God. And Lord, we just praise you for that. And uh, so, Lord, we just we commit all these things to your hands. We do pray that you give fruit uh, to our missionaries, uh, help them to have fruit for their labor, and help us, Lord, to have fruit here. And uh, we just want to be busy about your work. We know that your coming is very, very soon. And we just need to be ready, watching, and waiting, and loving your appearing. But, Lord, until that time comes, we can be busy. And help us to be faithful doing the work that you've given us to do. Father, we ask and pray you will bless us now. Bless the rest of our song service and our giving and everything that we do here, Lord, as we worship and praise your holy name. We ask these things now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, just a couple uh, announcements here I want to let you know about for Sunday. Uh, what's going on here? 9 o'clock Sunday, we're having our Easter breakfast. And if you did not sign up for that and still would like to come, just please, you can. there's a list in the back. You can also, uh, there's a list over in the activity building. Uh, you can sign that list over there as well if you'd like to. But anyway, we'll combine those lists. And if you sign up to bring eggs uh, for the breakfast, please have those here by 8.30. Um, and if, I know we had a couple folks say that they could help uh, with the eggs, get those uh, started. But if you would like to help out with that, please let me know. Um, I know some of the times you have kids getting ready and you're trying to get out the door and all that. But if you're able to and are able to help get the eggs uh, made and stuff, please let me know. We're going to set up over in the gym, and then we're going to see how many we have coming uh, for that service. If we have over 40 for the breakfast, then we're probably going to go ahead and just meet over there for Sunday school. Because I know we'll probably have another 30 or so coming here for Sunday school. And, and that's going to be probably a little bit too much in here for some of the adults that are coming. Uh, we're trying to get our mask only service, trying to get them back into the same time uh, that we're having church here. So if we stay over in the activity building, we'll live stream the service over here just like we've done for the 11 o'clock and 7.30 Sunday night services. And then uh, we're hoping to eventually get everybody over in that building. And then from there, as people start feeling a little more comfortable, uh, we'll go back to normal, just coming back over here to the church service and uh, go from there. But uh, so we have the 9 o'clock breakfast and then uh, we'll have the Sunday school and then our 11 o'clock service. And then after our 11 o'clock service there, about 12 o'clock, we'll have the uh, Easter egg hunt for the young people. And so we'll split them up. They'll all meet in the activity building and we'll split them up by age group and then they'll be dismissed out to the property uh, depending on where uh, their age group is going to go. Now, if it rains that day, um, I think it's supposed to be warm. It's getting really cold tomorrow. So uh, it's going to be cold again, have a cold snap. 
but it's supposed to warm back up, I think, Saturday and Sunday. So uh, hopefully we'll have some nice weather there Sunday. But if it does rain, then they will do that in the buildings. They've done that before. Uh, they'll use the uh, fellowship hall, and then they'll use the basement here uh, in the building for the age groups as well. So that's what's going on Sunday morning. And then a couple of dates that we have coming up. Uh, we have the 16th of April. We have the team banquet. Uh, Brother Scott Polly is going to be here with us uh, for that. And uh, the banquet will be from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m., uh, we'll eat, and then, of course, uh, Brother Polly bring a challenge there for the young people. And uh, and we enjoy that. It's a great, it's a fun time, but we do ask if you have teenagers coming to that, please, please, please make sure you get them at 6 o'clock as promptly as you can. Because uh, it's hard after you've been up all night. And then I know our adults, a lot of times they might get a power nap Saturday morning and then they're back up. I know usually I'm back up by about 11 and they're trying to get stuff done for the day. Uh, so... Anyway, just try, you're going on just a little bit of sleep, so you want to get to bed just as quickly as you can. Um, and then our mother-daughter banquet, that is uh, set for April 23rd. That's going to be in the fellowship hall. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet now in the back. I think I told you that Sunday, but I didn't have a sign-up sheet back there. Uh, but we do have one in the back here in the vestibule. So if you sign the one over there, you don't need to sign the one back here. We're going to combine those. And uh, we have about a capacity, I think, of about 70 folks. So I don't think we'll get more than that. Uh, so if you're just trying to be very polite and let other people sign up and then see how many is there, please don't do that. Put your name on the list as soon as possible so we can get a better feel for what we're going to be doing. And then I think the last day uh, to sign up will be the 14th, okay, so April 14th, so that's two weeks, two Wednesdays. Uh, that way we can know what to do as far as the decorations for the team banquet because uh, we're going to use some of those decorations as well. But that will let us know as far as tables and everything else we need to do. So anyway, that's what's going on there in April. And then uh, also the Sunday, April 18th, uh, that Sunday we are going to have our baby child dedication time. And uh, so if you would like to uh, have your baby dedicated or child dedicated and not done that, we would like to get them uh, a Bible or if they're a young child, we'd like to get them a special book. Uh, for them, and if you would just let me know so I can put their name down there. I'll probably be contacting the parents uh, through the week, but it'd be easier if you just give me the name and I'll just jot it down uh, because I need to make sure I have the names and everything spelled correctly uh, when we do that. So it doesn't matter what age it is. We try to do this as a baby uh, so we have a baby dedication, and I just need to schedule at the same time each year. I think it's been a few years since we've had one, so uh, we'll probably have a few of the older kids well. But that's all the announcements I have. So if I can get a couple of ushers to come, we'll prepare for our Wednesday night offering. And then uh, we'll have another song here in just a second. Ask Mike if you mind praying for the offering, please.
is probably a very familiar uh, passage of Scripture. If you've been in church any period of time, you've probably heard several messages from the book of Philippians, and then probably also several messages from this particular chapter. Uh, there's a lot of great things that we have here in this chapter, and I'm going to point out one thing in particular uh, as we go through this. You know, a lot of times one problem we have in the Christian life is we have a problem with being content. We know God wants us to be content. The Bible tells us that over and over again. But we simply have a problem being content in our situation. Uh, it's so easy, uh, so easy for us to complain about, you know, we look at a situation, we look at a problem we have, and we... You know, sometimes we complain to God, and if we're going to complain, that's where we need to complain to, because He already knows what we're thinking anyway. And uh, but we we complain to Him. Sometimes we complain to others. But what God wants us to do is to learn to be content. He wants us to have that contentful spirit. And there is really a secret to being content. It's not a secret secret because God tells us how to do it. But we're going to pull this out of the scriptures here and how we can learn to be content. Here in Philippians 4 and verse number 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. And that actually, that word moderation actually means gentleness. Uh, it says, Let it be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requesting be known unto God. Don't wait. Until God answers your prayer and then thank Him. Thank Him ahead of time. Thank Him that He loves you. Thank you. Thank Him that He cares for you and He only wants what's best for you. That's what it's saying there. With, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And that is the battleground right there for the Christian. It is in the mind. That's where the battle takes place so often, and that's where we lose the battles in our mind. It's in our thinking. Finally, brethren, what sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are good report? If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the, last, at, at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned, and this is our main verse right here, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Now back in verse number 11, Paul says here, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. So being content is something we can learn how to do. So we're going to look at some scriptures here tonight and how we can learn to be content. Let's pray. Father, we ask you to bless the message now, I pray that you would give me the words, Lord, you want me to say. And Lord, we are thankful that you uh, choose to use such sinful flesh. And Lord, I'm thankful that you choose to use me. And, and Lord, I just pray that everything we do, Lord, it might honor and glorify your holy name. And Lord, I pray that as we live this Christian life, not just on a Sunday or a Wednesday, but throughout the week, that Lord, we can truly learn to be content. That we can know what it's like to be content in every situation, no matter what's going on, no matter what the circumstances are. And Lord, I just pray also if there be one amongst us, Lord, that does not know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Lord, maybe they have thought they've been saved for years, but you reveal to them tonight, Lord, that maybe they just have never made that decision a permanent decision. They've never really done that, but they've deceived their own heart. Lord, I pray that tonight would be the night they get saved. Father, we just ask you to have your way and will now in our hearts and lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, let me give you some verses here about being content. 1 Timothy 6.8 says, Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Hebrews 13.5 says, Let your conversation, that's your life, be without covetousness. 
That's where we desire to have things, more things than what we need. That's covetousness. Uh, it says, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Luke 3, 14, Jesus told the soldiers there. He says, and be content with your wages. I like what 1 Timothy 6, 6 says. It says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So obviously God wants us to be content but in the world in which we live, how do we become content? I mentioned what's going on in California and other things. We see stuff like that and we're like, Lord, what in the world's going on? You know, what is happening? How can we be content in this world in which we live? Well, let's look here at the secret of being content as given to us from God's Word. Take your Bibles and turn back with me to the book of Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, this is the Sermon on the Mount. <clears throat> if we're going to be content, if we want to be content, then what we need to do first is we need to set Christ first in our life. Now that seems like a no-brainer, but you would not believe how often uh, that when we stop and we're wondering, you know, what's going on in my life, and we step back and we take a good spiritual evaluation, we often realize Christ has not been first. And we want to do it. It's in our spirit to do it. But we simply just don't do it. Matthew 5 and verse 6, look at what it says here. This is part of what we call the Beatitudes uh, because they're all blessed, talking about happiness. It says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be Filled. If we want to be content, we need to set Christ first. Matthew 6, 33, uh, as Jesus was talking about, uh, take no thought, you know, what we shall eat or what we shall drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed. Verse 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So often people have a misunderstanding of what righteousness means. They think that if you uh, get saved and you come to church, that means you're going to have to give up this and give up that and give up this and give up that. That's not what all that's talking about. Now, there are some things you ought to give up. But verse 33 makes it plain. When you put righteousness first, there is so much that is added unto you. Those things that are added unto you start crowding out those things that you end up doing away with. You see, I've talked to people before and uh, maybe they've been hanging around the wrong crowd and then they start coming to church and... Uh, and I tell them, say, you know what? You don't have to tell your friends, hey, I can't talk to you anymore. I can't hang around you anymore. Uh, you, know, you just start doing what's right. You seek righteousness first. And you'll find those friends are going to do one of two things. They're either going to come along with you and start coming to church. And they're going to start going right themselves. Or you're going to find out they really weren't the friend you thought they were. Yeah. And they're just going to leave you alone. And that's so often what happens. You don't have to tell them goodbye. What we need to do, though, is seek righteousness first. Becky and I have been kind of on this little diet, uh, trying to lose some weight. I've been, my goal's been one to two pounds every week. And so far, I've done okay with it. And uh, I thought, you know, it gets discouraging me because I'm thinking, man, I've got 35 weeks of this. This is terrible. And, uh, but, you know, I'm just trying to, I need to get down at about 220 would be a good weight for me. And, and I, I've lost about 10 pounds so far. And, and uh, but you know, when you're on that diet, I've never noticed, and of course we don't watch a lot of, uh, we don't have TV, but we watch, you know, sometimes we'll stream something on YouTube or something. And when I was watching some of the NCAA tournament, these advertisements kept coming up. And it's all food. <laughs> I mean, everything. I was like, good night, no wonder I'm so fat. This is all I see all the time. And it's like, you know, when you're on a diet, everything's looking good. I mean, I've never seen a McDonald's. McDonald's is nasty, but I've never seen a McDonald's, you know, burger look so juicy. And I thought, wow, that's an amazing thing. But, you know, I noticed this the other day. We, we actually ended up cheating a little bit yesterday. We went to the Mexican restaurant, and uh, we decided that was going to be, because you need to not cut it all out. You need to gradually do some things. And, and uh, so we were eating at the Mexican restaurant. It had some bread and things like that. And after we were done, I mean, I was honestly just getting the chips. I was only stuffing the chips. But I went ahead and ate my super burrito. 
Just, just, just to top it off. But then I looked up at the TV, there was a soccer game going, and guess what I saw? A food commercial. And I was like, man, that doesn't even look good. But why did it not look good? Because I know I'm full. You see? To the hungry soul, though, everything looks sweet. To the bitter soul, the Bible says everything looks sweet. To the hungry soul, everything looks like, oh man, I've got to have that, I've got to have that. And that's what the verse says here in Matthew chapter 5, in verse number 6. It says, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Why? For they shall be filled. When you're filled with righteousness, you're filled with the proper things. Those other things that the devil's trying to fill you with, they no longer look appealing. We must hunger and thirst after righteousness. Most people, what they're seeking for in life is they're seeking for happiness. They're seeking uh, for satisfaction. They're seeking for other things. But what we need to be seeking is righteousness. And then these other things are added unto us. The joy that we lack, the peace that we lack, the fulfillment, the satisfaction, all that, those are all symptoms telling us there's something wrong. I remember what actually got me in the church. When I started coming to church, I had, I was saved, but I didn't know I was saved. I, I was living in sin, all kinds of things, but I had no joy and I had no peace. And that's what I longed for. I remember many times laying on, on my bed at night and just thinking, is this all there is? Is this it? What a miserable existence. Say, God, there's got to be something more to life than this. This is miserable. It's like a rat race. We just go out and work and make money and to retire. It's like, what good is that? That has no eternal benefit. But then when God invited me to church, one of the first things I noticed in this church, I purposely went in jeans and t-shirt. I think I told you all the story. And I thought if anybody says anything to me, how I'm dressed, I'm out of here, I'm never coming back. You know, we're always looking for an excuse never to come back to church, aren't we? That's the way it usually is. And I was the same way. And anyway, I went there, and, and these people were just so excited to see me. And I listened to the preacher, and I kept watching people. I'm a people watcher anyway. And I was watching. I thought, these people have something I don't. They've got joy. I have no joy. They've got peace. I have no peace. But the stuff that they're telling me, the stuff that I'm hearing from the preacher, this doesn't make sense to me. And then it took me a long time to figure out this preacher. I thought he was following me around everywhere, that he, you know, everywhere I was going. I thought, how does he know all this stuff about me? I didn't realize the Holy Spirit was using him to speak to me. I didn't realize that's how that preaching stuff worked. And uh, but God was dealing with my heart. But I knew I lacked some things. You see, I was sick. Why? Because I was not filled with righteousness. And that's why I was not blessed. That's why I was not happy. That's why I was not filled. But when I started seeking the right things, I started hungering and thirsting after righteousness, all those other things are just a byproduct that comes along. They're there. You know, those are things that you stumble across on the, the path of doing good. Our disease that we have is unrighteousness. That's our disease. So until we realize that we need Jesus and Him alone, that He's the only cure, until we realize that, then we're not going to have our deepest needs met. Matter of fact, hold your place. Uh, well, you don't need to hold your place here. I don't think we're coming back to Matthew. No, we're not. Turn to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9 and 10. Listen to what these verses here say. You know, if we're going to be content, if the secret to being content in our life is we must set Christ first. That's got to be where it starts. Colossians 2 verse 9 says, For in Him, this is speaking of Jesus Christ, For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power. We are complete in Christ. That's why he must be first. When we get Jesus, we get everything else we need. Isn't that wonderful how that works? The Bible even tells us there in Revelation, he's the Alpha and Omega. That's the first letter in the Greek alphabet, and that's the last letter in the Greek alphabet. That means he's the first. He's the last. 
We get him, we get everything, and we get everything else in between. That's why it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So if we want to be content, we need to set Christ first. If we want to be content, we need to seek Christ fervently. We need to seek him fervently. You know, those verses back in Matthew 5 and 6 talks about uh, hungering and thirsting after righteousness. But a hungry person is on a deliberate quest for food. You ever been really hungry? And like, I mean, you just feel like, oh man, I can't make it. You know, you've been out working all day, you haven't eaten all day, you're just, you're starting to get weak and you're getting, every time you've been there, you're getting a little dizzy. Like, man, I need some food. I need it now. It's like, I need to eat. You're on a quest for food and nothing is going to sidetrack you. That's the way we need to be when it comes to seeking righteousness. This is not just talking about someone whose stomach's growling every once in a while. This is somebody who's famished. They're at the point. They desperately need food. And you know what? When you desperately need food, your pride goes right out the window. You don't care. I mean, when you're desperate for something to eat, you don't care if you find it on the street. You don't care where it's at. You're ready to pick it up and chow down. You don't need a fork. You don't need a spoon. You don't need all the dainties. You're ready just to gobble up. That is when you're famished. That is how we are to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Our pride needs to get out of the way. So oftentimes when we come to church, you know, our minds are focused on a thousand other things. But what we need to do when we come to church, the Bible says when we come to the house of God, be more ready to hear than to give an answer. That means we need to be ready. We need to be hungry and thirsty. I've heard some people say, you know, well, I come to church and I don't get anything. I say, well, do you expect to get anything? It's like, what do you mean? Well, obviously you don't know what I mean then. <laughs> you know, when I come to church, I expect to get something. And uh, oftentimes, like when I'm preaching, you got to remember, I've already been in church because I've had to preach this message to myself as I'm preparing this. So God's already been working on me with these messages. And it gets me excited because I see how God's dealt with me. But I had to eat too. I had to get that spiritual food. And I had to come listening for the Spirit of God. When you come expecting, that's when you're more likely going to get something. <clears throat> you know, people who are hungry have a narrow focus. They're only interested in food. They're only interested in water. They want to get what it is that they definitely need. These people, hungry people, are determined people. They don't want to be fed by somebody else. If you're hungry... You don't want to say, oh, man, I'm famished. Hey, hey, will you make me a sandwich? If you're hungry, obviously, if you're waiting on your, your spouse to make you a sandwich, you're not that hungry, all right? <laughs> when you're hungry, you're ready to eat. I know that's the way I am. I, whenever I'll be over here in the office for a while, sometimes, you know, I will, I'll go, I'll just forget to eat. It might be 3 or 4 o'clock, and they're like, oh, you know, I'm getting hungry. I need to go eat. And Becky's like, oh, I'll make you something. And she makes some delicious stuff. But I'm not into the taste thing right now. I want something here. I was like, that's okay, honey. I'll take care of it. And I just looked in the refrigerator. Anything that's in there that looks even good, I'm ready to grab it and start filling it in. You see, that's what a hungry person does. They're not looking for, they're, you know, hey, honey, will you feed me? Will you take care of me? You know, you're hungry. You want to get it in. And that's the way it is. You know, when we're hungry and thirsting after God, we shouldn't say, well, you know, I didn't get anything from Sunday school. I didn't get anything from the morning church service. I didn't get anything from the evening service. But well, what are you getting Monday? What are you getting Tuesday? What are you getting Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? What are you getting when you're feeding yourself? If you're not feeding yourself, you're probably not hungry enough. You see, we need to be hungry and thirsty for righteousness. You're ready to grab at any crumb that you can get. Hungry people pay a price. They're, going to, they're willing to go anywhere, do almost anything, and pay any price just to get food. I mentioned that beggars, when they're looking for food, they lose all their pride. People sometimes, you know, when we come to church, sometimes if we're not careful, we come and we come with the spirit of criticism. But it's not just the church. Sometimes we do it in our homes. We're critical in our homes, and we shouldn't be. That, when you have a critical spirit, you're not hungry and thirsty enough for righteousness. Because those people are blessed. Those are happy people. Those are people that have peace and joy. Why aren't some people hungry? Because sometimes they're sick. You know when you get sick, you lose your appetite. When we had that COVID here back in October, I had the COVID. I think I lost 10 pounds back then. I didn't feel like eating anything. 
And then you lose your taste and smell. Of course, that didn't bother me any, but Becky, she really had to, that was depressing to her. I, to me, I didn't care. And, uh, but I just didn't feel like he did anything. Why? Because I was sick. You know, sometimes people are sick spiritually. They've gone through some battle or trial and they've been beaten up by the devil and they're just not feeling well spiritually. And you don't hunger and thirst after righteousness during those times. But guess what? You still need the great physician. You still need to be seeking him because he's the one that can heal you. Some people aren't hungry because they're full of the wrong things. You know? <laughs> and this is probably why I, I weigh what I do and why I'm on a diet now. But uh, sometimes I'll come in late at night. My bad thing is snacking at night. And that's a horrible thing to do. And uh, but I come in and, and it's, it's, I guess it's stress eating. You, know, you just eat and you're just trying to relax and just, you know, you're eating whatever. But I eat all the wrong things. There's chips in there. Guess what? Gone. <laughs> Cookies, gone. They're quick. They're ready. Chocolate, you name it, it's going to be gone. I mean, I'm going to eat whatever's there if it's quick and it's ready to go. And it's an afterthought thing. You know, I should have made, probably made me a sandwich. Well, that took too long. The other stuff was already made. It was there. <laughs> eat it. You're filled with the wrong things. But guess what we do spiritually? We get filled with the wrong things too. We let the world crowd everything that's good. We let it, the world crowd it out of our life. Remember what it said there? Jesus was talking about this, about the seed. That some seeds planted by the wayside. Some seeds land from stony ground. They talked about there were there was some seed that it sprung up, and that seed got choked. And you remember what choked the seed? It was the cares of this world and the lust of other things entering in that choked the seed so that it became unfruitful. It wasn't that the ground necessarily was bad. It was just there were too many weeds in the garden. And it choked the good plant. Sometimes we just have too many things going on in our life when we need to come apart and spend time with the Lord. We need to seek Him first. If we're going to be content, lastly... We need to savor Christ forever. We need to set Christ first. We need to seek Christ fervently. With all diligence, we need to look after our own heart. But then lastly, we need to savor Christ forever. What does that mean? You know, you have all of God that you want to have. Now you think about that for a second. Sometimes people are like, man, God, where are you? Where are you? You have all of God that you want to have. The problem is so often, though, is we've not sought him as diligently as we should have been seeking him. You know, when we're filled with righteousness, we'll be content. If we have a small hunger, so often we get small satisfaction. We get small satisfaction from God's word. We get small satisfaction from prayer. We get small satisfaction from church. That's because we have a small hunger. You have a great hunger, though. You get great satisfaction from those things because you get more of Jesus Christ. It's hungering and thirsting after his righteousness. The Bible promises there, Jesus himself promises, when you do that, you shall be filled. We get filled. When we're filled with all righteousness, guess what? We're going to be content people. Happiness and holiness are linked together. God says in Peter, he says, be holy for I am holy. He tells us in the Old Testament, be holy for I am holy. We're commanded to be holy in both Testaments. Well, how do you do that? Well, happiness and holiness go together. When you have righteousness in your life, you're going to be a happy person. You're going to be a content person. Spiritual hunger is a lot like physical hunger. You just can't eat once and be done. Guess what? You're going to get hungry again. And you're going to get hungry again. And hungry again. You have to keep feeding yourself. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Some Christians are starving themselves to death, and that's why they're not happy. That's why they're not content. That's why they have no peace. That's why they don't have joy. They're starving themselves spiritually. We've not spent time with Christ in prayer. We have not spend time with him in his word. So the question is, are you content? And if not, why not? Why not? What's holding you back? We get all of God that we want. 
As much as we want, he's already there. But are we hungering and thirsting after him? Are we putting him first? Are we seeking him fervently? Are we savoring Christ forever? Let me read 1 Timothy 6, 6 again. And listen to this verse again. Godliness with contentment. That holiness and that happiness go hand in hand. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Why did they ask pretty awesome? Pretty awesome. Let's put Christ first in everything. Let's seek him fervently. And let's not just seek him passionately. Let's be diligent about seeking him and then enjoy him every day of our life and our daily walk. But it all starts with salvation. Do you know Christ as your Savior? That's where it's got to start. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, we're going to give you an opportunity to do that. Let's all stand. We'll have a word of prayer with our heads bowed and eyes closed. Let me just ask you a question. Our heads bowed and eyes closed. If you were to die today, do you know for sure that you'd go to heaven? How many of you would say, if I die this moment, I know, I, can, I know because the Bible tells me, I know what the Bible says, and I know because I've had a time in my life, I became born again. Yes, I know if I die today, I would go to heaven. That's your testimony. That's you. Would you indicate that by lifting your hand real high? Put it right back down. If you couldn't, raise your hand. I appreciate your honesty. And you know, God says in his word, in, in, in 1 John, it says, These things are written that ye may know ye have eternal life. I used to think, well, these cocky people don't know for sure they're going to heaven. We won't know until we get there. But that's not, how can you have joy and peace and hope you're going to get there? <clears throat> you can't have joy and peace that way. You can only have joy and peace in knowing you're going there. And guess what? It doesn't depend on you. It all depends on Jesus. He paid the price in full. He rose from the dead that third day. That's why we celebrate Easter. And because he paid your debt in full, you can have a home in heaven. The Bible says we're all sinners. We all deserve God's wrath. We all deserve the lake of fire. Each one of us. That's what we deserve. But Christ loved us. He does not want us to go there. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He wants all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Will you put your faith and trust in him? If you're willing to do that, and you didn't raise your hand a moment ago, I didn't see every hand, so I just want to give you an opportunity. But if you didn't do that, and you say, yes, I'd like to ask Christ to save me. If you're willing to do that, I'm not asking you to say a speech or do anything publicly. But with heads bowed and eyes closed, I'm just asking you to show me so I can pray for you. If that's you, would you indicate that by lifting your hand real high, put it right back down. Anybody like that? Maybe someone's watching on Facebook or YouTube. You can pray and ask them at home. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness to us. And Lord, we truly should be a content people. If anybody ought to be happy, I'll be a Christian. And Lord, I pray that you help us to learn these great truths that it starts with Jesus Christ and it ends with Jesus Christ. How much are we hungry and thirsting after righteousness? And then, Lord, it's got to be something we do every day. Help us, Lord, to do these things. And then all these things will be added up. Father, thank you so much for your patience with us because we are worthy. And Lord, we just ask you to bless this invitation time now. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. 250. 250, we're going to sing a few verses of a song of invitation. If you'd like to come pray, the altar's open. If you'd like to come pray with these names up here as well, you can do that as we sing.
And I'm thankful he gives us these great truths in his word. He's just trying to instruct us and direct us in life. And all we need to do is be teachable, be willing to learn what it is God has for us. Well, God bless you. Thank you for being here. And again, it's good having the helmets here in our service. Hope your kids had a great time down in the Masters Club. So let's close the service here in a word of prayer. And I'm going to ask Corey if you'd mind dismissing him for her, please. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another opportunity to come out to your house. Thank you for the message, Lord. May it please uh, convict our hearts that we will learn to be content in the situation we're in. Lord, again, thank you for all your many blessings, all to you for us. Again, bless this church, Pastor Walton. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, God bless you. Have a great night.